Good morning. My name is Stacy Heineman, and it is my pleasure to bring to you the children's message this morning. Before we get really into the lesson today, I thought it would be nice if we could do some breathing. Let's take a breath together. And I'm not just talking about a quick inhale or exhale, but real true breathing. And when we inhale, I think we all know that we take in oxygen, which is something that our bodies really need to survive. But when we breathe, something really special is happening. And in the Bible, we hear these words from the book of Job. The spirit of God has made me and in the breath of the Almighty gives me life. When we breathe, we also breathe in a spirit breath, and that is the breath of God in which we take in our lungs along with the oxygen. And our bodies need this oxygen, like I said, to survive, but our souls, just like the oxygen, our souls need the breath of God to help provide healing from within. So let's try this exercise all together. We're going to take a deep breath in, uh, in through our nose, and we're going to hold it for a moment. And then we're just going to exhale slowly out of our mouths. Okay, so let's do this all together. All right, ready? Deep breath in. And hold it. And exhale. That was great. You did a great job. Let's do it again. Okay, one more time. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. And exhale. Great job. For many faith communities, the place where they go to worship is called a sanctuary. And I love getting to be able to go to the sanctuary at St. Paul's because it is a place that has always brought me the feeling of peace and comfort anytime that I've gone in there. And I'm pretty sure that that's how everyone feels about the sanctuary at St. Paul's. But did you know that sanctuary does not necessarily mean the church where there's an altar and the pews and the organ and the stained glass windows? Sanctuary actually means safe place. And there are a lot of different types of sanctuaries. They have sanctuaries for all kinds of animals like birds where they are, the birds are taken to a sanctuary when they're injured and need to be rehabilitated or if their um, habitat has been uh, destroyed or damaged in some way. There's elephants are in sanctuaries so that they can live happily without having worry about being hunted and there's you probably heard the saying of sanctuary cities within our country well a church sanctuary is a place where god's people can go to feel their feelings and to understand what they're feeling in a safe environment uh, where they feel the comfort of god's love and that they are safe there in experiencing and trying to understand their feelings. And those feelings could range from happiness or sadness, joy, fear, anger, and being able to understand and experience those feelings um, in the community of one another in the sanctuary of St. Paul's is something quite special. But one of the very big challenges that everyone has had over the past year is how to keep providing this feeling of safety, of this safe place, this sanctuary um, during this pandemic. And a lot of churches have made the very hard decision to postpone um, in-person worship like we did. St. Paul's did close down for a while until we felt it was safe where we could get back together. And some churches never shut down and they continued their um, in-person worship, but they had to implement new rules to keep everybody safe. So they would ask their congregants to wear masks and sit at a distance and make sure you use hand sanitizer and you know no handshakes and no singing. Um, but we 
these decisions were made um, to really keep everyone safe. So I want you to just take a second to imagine those conversations and the hard work that had to take place to make uh, make all this possible. Uh, you know, with the closing down of in-person worship, how do we still provide that service to people? And we, so a lot of places like we did went online and trying to keep everyone engaged and but keeping everybody as safe as possible. And no matter how well different places tried to provide the best that they could for their community, it just wasn't the same. And what could it be that we could do for ourselves at home to create that sense of sanctuary for ourselves. And I had an idea. I'd like to share something with you. This is what's left. And you can see it's pretty cut up and torn up and old and it has holes in it. But this was my blanket that I used to carry around when I was a child. And I carried this around all over the place because it provided me a sense of comfort and security when I needed it. And I loved this blanket. And even though I keep it stored away in a box now, um, it still provides me comfort knowing that I still have what's left of my childhood blanket. But you can also see behind me, I have my other new favorite blanket and this is the one that I use when I f need some comfort at home um, you know it's colder it's winter and sometimes when I just need to settle down and kind of take a time out I like to sit in my favorite chair which is a chair that was from my grandfather and my blanket and I just get all wrapped up and feel really comfortable and cozy and warm and I just it just makes me feel good and a lot of times what I do I know people use blankets in lots of different ways but for myself I love to wrap it around me and it just provides me a sense of comfort and warmth and security and so I was wondering if maybe you all have a special blanket or maybe um, a special sweater. This is one of my favorite sweaters that also provides me that sense of security. It's big and soft and warm, or maybe there's a bathrobe that you have that provides that feeling. And so I invite you to find that one thing, whether it's a blanket or your sweater, or um, like I said, a bathrobe, and wrap it around yourself and feel the comfort and warmth that it brings you. Maybe a sense of love because it was given to you by someone special. And when you wrap it around yourself and wrap it around your shoulders and snuggle it in real tight, I want you to think of all of us at St. Paul's embracing you, that, com that sense of community and love that we get when we go into the sanctuary in person for worship that sense of belonging and love that we feel. Imagine that wrapping, your, wrapping itself around you while you wrap yourself in this blanket. And think about your family and friends and imagine them giving you this hug, this warm embrace of comfort and security. And I also invite you to think of God giving you a great big hug. During these difficult times, we haven't gotten to experience this contact outside of people that we live with. And I think that's what everybody really misses is that healthy, loving community spirit of shaking hands and seeing each other and hugging. And so we need to find a new way to do that. And so I think that maybe this blanket idea is a great way to kind of fill in that gap until we get to a place where we can start doing all the things that we like to do 
in the sanctuary at St. Paul's altogether. But don't forget that there is the love that's still there. And when you think about your friends and your family and the community at St. Paul's, we're all there for each other, even if it's just in the spirit of a blanket wrap. So as we keep these blankets around our shoulders and giving us that comfort and love, I would like to share a special blanket blessing with you so that every time that we wrap ourselves up in our blankets or our sweaters or the bathrobes, um, we know that we are in a safe place to express our truest selves and express the healing touch of God's love. Okay, so I would like for you to repeat after me. Loving God, please bless these blankets so that whenever we wear them, we can feel the warmth of your love. We can feel the healing touch of your hands we can feel safe to be our truest selves. Amen. Thanks for, thanks for spending some time with me and have a great Sunday. Bye.